Ladies and gentlemen, have you forgot your keys? Have you been locked out of your house? Do you want to never do that again? This video is for you. What's going on guys? My name is Chris and I'm back with you with another unboxing and review video. This video is gonna be for the Avison, if that's how you pronounce it, A-I-B-O-C-N. And this is gonna be for their newest smart door handle, door lock, however you guys want to use this. They actually offer a right handle and a left handle as well. If I do miss anything in this video, in the description box right below the video is gonna have this exact link for this exact same smart door lock so you guys can read more about it pick one up yourself after the video is finished. Let's get it right out of the box. We're gonna show you some tips about how to install it as well. So let's see what we got inside the box. Alrighty folks, let's go ahead and open it on up, see what we got here. There is a warranty of course with this as well. We got our user manual, little information packet. Looks like we have some templates there as well, some soft padding for it. I'm pretty sure that goes behind the door panel here. And again, they do make a left-handed as well meaning if obviously the door is on the other side, meaning that the lock would be over here on this side or again, the right handle. Both those are in the description box below. You do have, of course, the manual entry as well. There's a lot of ways to get in with this. We're gonna go over every single one. So let's get this guy out here. We're gonna get to that in just a second. And down below is gonna be your hardware. So let's start with the key components. This is gonna be for your regular lock down below with your screws and all the hardware. And then here is gonna be your chrome piece that inserts in the door hinge uh, and just go ahead and peel off that top tape. All right, coming to this one here. Again, this is gonna be our keypad here. You do have a piece of film on there. Go ahead and remove that film. And of course, the plastic on the handle here as well. That feels absolutely beautifully solid right there. That is not feeling cheap in my hand. This is complete metal. Looks absolutely fantastic with that kind of that little bit of a gloss finish, but not over the top. And that is a dark, beautiful finish as we can see. Okay, so coming out the back here is gonna be our cord. Obviously that is what attaches to the other end of it. And let's look all the way around it here. And if you are wondering, yes, that is a fingerprint sensor. We're gonna get to that, of course. Coming over here to the other side is gonna be our back plate. And then also what we have here which is gonna be battery powered as well for again, multi-function of many different availabilities to be able to get in your door. That is four AA batteries. This is where your plug that we just saw on the other piece inserts into the board right here. Looks like you have a button right here as well, the back of that. And then here is of course our mechanism right here for the entry. This of course would be on the interior portion of the door, obviously because that carries sensitive batteries in there. You don't want any hackers or pickers coming up to your front door. And so this is gonna be the interior portion inside your home, remove the plastic of course, this is a beautiful finish as well. Very nice, heavy, durable. Again, not cheap. That's complete metal. Here's a couple specifications for you guys. You guys can pause that and read that if you want. We'll run a few of these by real quickly here. There's the working temperature, the door thickness. The material is a zinc alloy. Code length can be six to 12 digits working humidity. And of course the unlocking method is gonna be your fingerprint. It can have Bluetooth access. We can do the card, a passcode, and a mechanical key. So this is great for Airbnb, maybe for rental units, for maintenance workers. And let me show you one of the pass keys. So they give you two of the pass keys with each door lock. And these actually run off of a 13.5 megahertz frequency, support one card pass. And on the back side, it says hold card close to inductive zone open door. So let's say you had this around your keychain. All you're gonna do is probably my guess is somewhere right around here or up towards the fingerprint. We're gonna get to that and it would unlock it kind of like a chip card on your credit card. Of course, you have the fingerprint. A lot of these things, some people would like these added features. Some people rather just go with the touch button or something like that. So for like Airbnb, for maintenance workers, you might wanna give them access to just a code and you could probably have them programmed so you know who gets in and who's assigned to what because you can 
real-time record, you can manage your passcodes and check unlock records in real time on the app. That is awesome. So you know who gets in with what code at what time. We'll be showing you that. Of course, it does have a dead battery alarm as well. And these are all the instructions, how to modify the passwords, etc. I won't get into all that. I'll let you guys dive into that. But again, if there's anything that I do miss in this video, it will be linked in the description box below. You guys can read more details there. And it is recommending not to have this exposed to direct sunlight or rain. It is not weatherproof IP rated. So you want this being on a covered front door area. Let's say if this was direct sunlight in, let's say, Arizona with the summer heat, that might affect the temperature of that as well. Or if you're in Seattle and it's raining and a lot of rain is dumping on it, you want it covered to protect the lock. And you're gonna loosen it two bolts. Most door handles have just two. After you're done loosening that up, you have one more here and one more here. And with two hands, pull left and pull right. And then this right here in the middle is going to be pulling out as well for a total of three pieces. Again, with those two pieces out, we've already loosened up our screws here and here, and now this piece just simply pulls straight out of the door, and that's gonna be your long center portion here, and now your door is completely stripped bare. Go ahead and clean out that middle section if you want, if there's any dust or debris, or maybe little pieces of metal that have shaved off over the years. All right, so I actually had to take a drill, and with a drill bit, and just shave off just a little bit on the top and bottom of the interior hole here. The square portion was a little bit larger than my old one, so that is able to slip in now. Again, just very, very little. You can use sandpaper if you want, but I was able to finally get that in there, and then it's gonna be able to slip in there, and we'll go ahead and put in our screws now, and it's looking fantastic. Also, something to keep in mind is whatever direction this flat side is, see this here, and then it curves over here, Make sure that's the same direction as your old one was to be able to latch into place in the door frame. All right, with the screws in place, now we're gonna come over to the middle section here, and this is where you can latch it to 60 millimeter or 70 millimeter length. We're gonna go ahead and keep it on 60 for right now, and if we need to, we'll go ahead and latch it over to 70, but that just gives you a little extra room if you put it over to 70 mil. And then just follow along in the directions here. Here is gonna be the front panel, obviously there. We have our gasket on there. We have a little bar up top there there and there with our center bar and then a pin down the middle there. The directions state all this. Then of course coming around here we're going to go ahead and droop the wire underneath this bar portion here so it's going to go underneath it being able to attach to the other side. Now they do give you a little template here for the holes that you will need and this is great. So this is showing you the template you need for the latch portion and how big you need it and how big you need this to be able to slip it in. Your old one should be completely compatible to this. And then with the third security bolt up on top, which is going to be a 10 mil. Now, I just want to pause real briefly here and state that I did not drill this hole in. As we already saw in the video, I expanded this portion just a little bit to fit in, but I did not drill this hole. If this is your home, I would recommend drilling this hole, of course, for the third brace screw. I just have these two screws in because this is not my house and I'm just temporarily staring here. I do not want to drill a hole into the door that will be exposed after I transfer the door lock to my new house. Let me show you. So once again, that hole is not drilled up here at the top and I just use the bottom two screws right here and here. Once those are tight, that is not going anywhere on you. Of course, I would recommend for a more long term, I don't know if that's gonna come loose, but it feels super steady right now just by using those two. So I do wanna mention that in the video, that if this is gonna be a permanent lock for you, you will need to drill that small hole up on top up here. But again, it feels super steady just using the two. I'm gonna leave that up to you, but I would recommend that third up top. All right, once those screws are tight, again, if you wanna use that third one up top going in, now we have our cable line underneath here plugged in with, of course, your batteries. And obviously, do not forget about your back seal on the back side as well. It's going to put a nice tight fit, not to mentioning if you ever do remove this, there won't be that edge dug into your wood, which I actually forgot how to pull it off and then put that back on. So don't forget that step. All right, when it is fully attached there, again, just using the two screws, but it's nice and secure, being able to latch in and out here on this side, coming over to this side here, obviously 
because it is locked on that side. So as we can see here, it is working here, but not until we unlock it here on this side would that actually go in. So this is gonna move on you, but it's not gonna move this here. We're gonna get to that in here in just a second. Now let's go ahead and come on over here to this area here. We're gonna go ahead and take off this old one, pull that one off and put on the new one that was provided in the package. So let me show you here what's gonna happen is when it is locked, this is gonna be able to move. And then when it's unlocked, but as you notice, that did not move at all. Let's go ahead and use the manual key for right now. So manual key goes in. We'll go ahead and turn it down for unlock and now as we pull the handle that is going to go in right there so when the door is locked like this let's say you're going to get movement in the handle but obviously nothing will happen until you unlock it with the keypad fingerprint with your card bluetooth and then you're going to get the latch being able to pivot in all right i'm going to edit my code on video but the key panel works just fine now we're actually looking at it at nighttime. it illuminates very nicely even with your porch light not on and your key card works great works very quickly getting in your house all right a little tip for you guys here now i actually installed this the wrong way at the beginning of the video here as you can see this is now on the other side and i was wondering what the deal was with the lock i thought it wasn't catching in the door hinge but what it was is it wasn't catching because i had this switched around i didn't pay attention to that make sure this is the exact same way your old one is facing for it to be able to hinge in the door what's going to happen if it's not properly inserted you're going to close it and even if it locks it's gonna just push right open because nothing is holding it inside of the hinge it's just running off of this being able to just push right open only using the two bolts and not the third it is actually held up very nicely not moving at all and very nice now again you can use the app we're gonna take a look at the app you can auto lock it I have it set for five seconds right now meaning that once I unlock it open up the door within five seconds it actually relocks itself if you do forget or if you close your door etc you can also play with those in the settings on the app all right guys let's look at the app it's called tt lock and it's all in the directions here and so what's nice about send e key you can send your e key to your family or friends and enable them to unlock the front door with their phone via the app you can generate passcodes you can do e keys passcodes records admin administration fingerprint ic cards and settings there i'm going to go ahead and play around with this a little bit here as we can see here that's really Really nice it shows hundred percent my battery life there it was super simple it took seconds to pair up after I downloaded the app okay some really sweet features especially for rental properties Airbnbs or maintenance workers etc even Amazon delivery people so right here we see generate passcode let's go ahead and click on this this gives us so many cool features you can generate a permanent passcode as you can see right here and if there's anything that you do see you can go ahead and pause this and read a little bit more about it or again the link is down below you can do a timed one meaning that whatever you set it for that passcode is only going to work during business hours for airbnb for a zillow property you guys get the idea for real estate agents etc one time this is going to give you a one-time passcode. It must be used within six hours of the current time. That's a really cool one as well. Again, the small fine print. You guys can pause that and read that. Let's go ahead and click now on erase. This one is super cool. So the passcode is valid for 24 hours from the current time. Caution, all passcodes used on this lock will be deleted on using the passcode, meaning that once the passcode is used, it will then be erased. We also have a custom one here where you can do it permanent if you want, start time, end time, the name of it, and passcode right there four to nine digits and reoccurring mode you know monday through sunday you guys can go ahead and pick the day down here work days daily weekend so you guys get the idea there one day or all days or just the weekends etc and then you can do the time and then here is enter a name for the passcode and then you generate the passcode right there okay e keys is going to be the same thing as sending e keys to the family passcodes right here if you click on your passcodes this is where you're having your information here we just obviously saw all that and that's where they would be in that portion there once you generate the passcodes your ic cards are going to be the little rf chips that we already saw and here you can add an ic card right there and you can name it you can do a permanent you can do a timed then you hit okay 
and you would know which chip card that you name is accessing it if you give it to your kids, etc. You know what son, what daughter came in at what time. So there's so many sweet features for knowing what's going on in your house. Let's go ahead and head on back. And fingerprint, I'm not really big on uh, biometrics, just personally, but if you wanted to add a fingerprint, you can do the same thing. You can do permanent or timed. Again, I'm not too big into biometrics, so I will skip that option, but that gives you an option. Authorized admin right here. You can create an admin. You can do a timed or permanent in a recipient's account, et cetera, start time, end time. So many sweet features within this. And records, of course, after people are in and out, we'll check this out once I start using it. But there would be obviously that information, the records of what codes are being put in, et cetera. And then settings here, this is where you definitely want to mess around with this as well. You have remote unlock off, you have auto lock, so meaning that if you do not lock it yourself, it's gonna auto lock after a minimum of five seconds. Uh, you can go up to 10 seconds, 15, 30, 60 seconds, or custom. That's if you forget to lock it, it will automatically lock. That's a great feature as well if you tend to forget to lock your door at night. We have passage mode. During the specific time period, the lock will remain unlocked until it is manually locked. That's a good feature as well if you are using this for a business. Lock sound, so you can have a lock sound on or off. Tamper alert, you can turn off or on. Privacy lock, by turning you are enabling privacy lock. Current mode is on, you can turn that off if you want. Reset button is on. Lock clock, calibrate time, daylight savings time. And diagnosis, upload data, import from another lock, that's cool. Firmware update, tendance, and unlock notification is on. And then of course you can delete that if you want. And then this right here in the middle, touch to unlock, press to lock. So let's say you're using your phone completely for your key system, even though you have generated passcodes. Before we know it, whether we like it or not, our cell phones are pretty much gonna be our driver's license, credit cards, which is a good thing, but a bad thing if you do lose your phone. So you do wanna be careful of that as well, but there's a lot of sweet security features in this app. Now in settings, you can add another lock, gateway, messages, customer service settings work with. Now, like we've already seen in the video, there is a dead battery alarm that informs you when you do need to replace your batteries, but there is an emergency power supply. Using a nine volt battery, what you would do in the case of, if you don't have your manual key, I'm not sure who would carry a nine volt battery on them, but just in case you could always go to the store, pick one up. But right here, there's two metal prongs here at the bottom. You would connect a nine volt battery to those prongs, which would give you just enough juice to enter your passcode to be able to get in your door. And then you would need to replace your batteries immediately. Again, this only gives you access to the panel for emergency power. But obviously, if you have your manual key, it would work just like normal. But if you don't have your key, which most people use their phones or a passcode, the 9 volt battery would give you an emergency backup just in case. A couple of other really nice safety features. If after six failed pin code attempts, the keypad will shut down for three minutes before being able to enter the pin again. The mechanical key and Bluetooth can still unlock it. And what's nice is the randomizer. So before entering your password, you can push some random numbers to prevent the password from being interfered based on the fingerprints on the frequency push numbers and being seen by anyone nearby. If you're fingerprints show up on the keypad. Now let me show you, I have actually created two passcodes. I've named them both the same thing. Of course, you can do different ones. And the one here down at the bottom, it says permanent. Now that actually generated its own passcode that you could share with people over a text message or something like that. Just obviously be careful who you're sending passcodes to. But the permanent custom passcode, that actually let me create a four to nine digit personal one that you can go ahead and customize for your kids, your spouse, etc. Again, the auto-generated ones will be long ones, but kind of hard to remember. I did a permanent custom one that I'm gonna be able to remember. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover up that passcode up top there. But as you can see, it's the validation period, time issued, and records of when that passcode has been used. All right, so let's number one, go to records. So if you need to refresh the records, top right. But let's go ahead and scroll down through here. As we can see here, I use the guest card right there at the different locations. Now I've named the card. As you can see there, it says Chris's card and guest card. You can see which card the IC cards have entered in and the time and date. Awesome. 
you can see that Chris has used the passcode to unlock the door on these specific days. So these are really cool to have all your records in one place, especially if you go ahead and give your employees, your workers, your kids the different passcodes. This is gonna be able to keep track of what is going on in your house. And if you are wondering, it's been about two or three weeks since I installed the door lock and it is still at 100% battery life. I did install some nice Duracell high-end batteries though. I would definitely skip your 99 cent store ones and install some beefy Duracell energizers. I'll link those in the description box below as well. Again, this door lock is going to be in the description box below guys. You can pick one up yourself, read more about it. I've really enjoyed it. Some sweet features to it. Please thumb that video up if it's helped you make an informed decision, but please guys don't go into debt for anything that I do make a video about. But if it intrigues you and you have cash go ahead and purchase on away i appreciate you watching please subscribe also on your way out and again that link is in the description box below we'll see you on the next video take care bye bye don't let the party stop guys hit one of these videos continue to watch we'll see you soon